It's not a requirement, but I think it helps. Yes, I'd like to call the Maumel Mill City Council meeting to order. First order of business is the, well, first thing I need to let you know is we're very glad to have Council Member Anderson back with us tonight. And uh, we also need to let you know that Council Member Vaprazan will not be here tonight as uh, he's got other things going. And <coughs> you don't know, Council Member uh, Kelly has resigned his position and we'll be dealing with that later on. He's actually moved out of the city of Maumelle. So uh, he no longer is a resident of Ward 2. So he cannot serve in that capacity. <coughs> so at this time, we'll move on to the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. And I'm going to lead us in that tonight. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day, Lord, and we're thankful for this community in which we serve. We'd ask you to be with us as we do the city's business here tonight, Lord, and bless us with wisdom and help us to make wise decisions, Lord. We'd ask you to be with our servicemen and women that are serving overseas and protecting us, Lord. We'd ask you to be with them and be with their families. We'd also ask you to be with our first responders, Lord, as they go out on calls and they don't know what it's going to be a lot of times until they show up, Lord. We'd ask you to be with them and Keep them safe and protect them as they protect our city and our citizens, Lord. We ask you to be with those that have been affected still by the, the wildfires, Lord, and the mudslides and the hurricanes. There's still people dealing with that all through the country, Lord. We ask you to be with them and, and bless them and encourage them as only you can. As we go here, Lord, ask, uh, help us to be an inspiration to those around us and to reach out to those in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, we have no special guest or announcements tonight. Next item is the approval of the minutes of the January 16th regular meeting. Uh, you had those in your packet, but there's been a revised set of those minutes passed out tonight, and they're at your seats. If there's any additions or corrections, Councilmember Mosley, are the, are the ones that have been passed out? Are they the official ones now? I mean, so do I need to make a motion to to correct or anything like that? They're the official ones. Well, they're official once we get all three signatures, but they are the ones that are being submitted for your approval. Okay, these are the ones being submitted for approval. Okay, because I, I, we, we made a couple of changes today, and, and if uh, these are official ones, I won't, I won't even point them out. But it, well, I will just briefly, I guess the fourth and fifth paragraph under financial statement review, uh, just the first sentence on each of those was changed. We didn't. It wasn't, we didn't quite have it right, but we got it. Oh, okay. So it sounds good to me. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> There's no other additions or corrections to the revised minutes. <laughs> motion okay. to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the revised <laughs> minutes of the January 16th meeting. Is there any, uh, are there any questions or discussion on that motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. <coughs> Motion passes. Next item is public comment. And I have one public comment card tonight that is uh, not dealing with agenda items, so we'll hear from that individual at this time. Miss Betty Dunn. <coughs> please state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Betty Dunn, and I reside at 21 Garden Oaks Drive here in Maumel. And I'd like to address uh, to the Honorable Mayor Mike Watson, councilmen and women. I uh, came to express my concern about the alleyway. Uh, we appreciate the driveway that we received, but I still feel that the curbside in front of my driveway is incomplete. There's a water leak that's been there since you all have done the driveway. And I have pictures uh, to show uh, what has been done, and there's a black, muddy thing that occurs in front of my in front of my house, 
And also, I have pictures of the curbsides that you all had done right down the street from me, and they look nothing like this. And that water leak has been there since you all had done that expansion. And I just want to submit my pictures. Okay, that, that'll be fine. Um, and we'll look, we'll look into it. Uh, I know there was a water leak there at one time, and it was my understanding it was addressed. There, there was a water leak there when the contractors showed up there. I know. But yes, ma'am, there was. But yeah, because it's always run down that curb down toward the east down it, it wasn't on my side okay it wasn't on your side okay and uh i had the uh i called mama mama L city water department before it was turned over to the central arkansas water and the guy came out and said it wasn't on my it wasn't a leak on my side but when i look at my water meter the water meter is still loaded with water my water meter and i just wonder how y'all read my meter with the water all up in there we don't read the meters. That's mm -hmm. Central Arkansas Water, and it was Maumelle Water Management, which is not part of the city, never was part of the city. Before before Central Arkansas Water took over your That's correct. Home. It's mm -hmm. never been part of the city. It's always been an independent board but any deal with the utilities. But groundwater also can fill up the water meter boxes. It doesn't have to be the water coming out of the water lines. Well, I just have two concerns. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll have Public Works look at it, and we'll, we'll be contacting you. Okay. Thank right. you. All right. <clears throat> Next item is the financial statement review, and that's done at the second meeting of each month. Uh, we have something new that we've started this year, and we're going to have department reports. Uh, and so we'll be hearing tonight from the Parks and Recreation Department and also from the Police Department. So first we'll hear from Mr. Philip Rayburn. Good evening. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, this, this time of year during the winter months, we basically, the weather dictates what we're able to do. Typically we'll do more maintenance on all our equipment when it's rainy or cold. And then as soon as we get a a dry, warmer day, then we'll start working on our outside facilities. A couple of projects that we started at the end of 2017 um, that, we've, that we have completed was we uh, painted the inside of the house at Park on the River. Um, we also started the pavilion out at Lake Willistine, and uh, that's been completed. We installed a light timer for it, six picnic tables, um, we're currently doing a reservation sign so people will know if it's reserved for that weekend. They can see it there at the, at the uh, pavilion. Um, the grill came in this past week, so that's something we'll be stalling in the next couple weeks. And then we'll do a little bit more cleanup and dirt and sod work around, around that pavilion. Uh, January and February, um, as far as our youth sports, basketball, youth basketball is currently going on at the community center. Youth soccer has started practicing. Their games will be coming within the next few weeks. Registration for youth softball and youth baseball is ongoing. And adult basketball registration is currently uh, going right now also. Uh, February events. Uh, this last Saturday we had the Daddy Daughter Dance at the Community Center. Uh, there was 138 tickets sold for that event and that's been uh, growing each year. It seems like we get more and more turnout. Uh, the next event will be February 24th. It's the Mother Son Date Night and it will also be at the Community Center. And February 25th the Maumelle Youth Council will be raking leaves at the uh, cemetery at uh, at Waterside. Uh, March, we, the Maumelle Chamber Expo will be held at the community center, so we'll help support that event. And March 31st will be the Easter egg hunt at Rolling Oaks Complex. And since I'll, I guess I'll be coming back later in the year, I'll save some of the other events <laughs> for, for then. Uh, but also, first of the year, we are, um, procuring some of our capital budget items. Uh, I've already got the state bid going in on the truck with the dump bed, a dishwasher for Park on the River, and we've ordered an infielder for the baseball softball complex. The three other capital items, we'll, we'll wait just a little bit to get those started, but it'll be the Rolling Oaks roof replacement for that concession stand, 
uh, the community center roof repairs and the replacement of the fire alarm at the community center. And then a couple other events that we've already started getting an application for, well not an event, but opening of the pool. We've gotten uh, lifeguard apps started coming in today. And we've got, um, we'll start doing, working towards Fourth Fest coming up in July. And that's pretty much what we're going up right now. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Alder, uh, Council Member Saunders. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two things. One, I just want to compliment you on the pavilion. Thank I think you. I think that's going to be a good thing for a lot of families for events and things. Second, just as a matter of information, can you publicly announce if if a family or a group wants to use it, where, how do they make reservations? Yeah, we're uh, working on the fees now. I've uh, submitted some to the to the mayor. Once we get that back, then we'll start putting it on our Facebook page, our website, and. Uh, once we get the sign construction on there, we don't have information where to call okay. call community center and, and uh, very good. We know of a couple already. Uh, they're wanting to reserve it, so it yeah. should it should do well. It's a nice pavilion. And then if it's not reserved, it'll be just first come first serve. And that's having that information there that'll help people know if something's coming up. Okay. Thank you, <clears throat> Councilmember Mosley. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your report. That's that's exactly what I was. Okay. Looking for. I was the. <laughs> I volunteered to go first. So. <laughs> you, were, you were designated guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, the pavilion's really nice. My wife and I go up there almost every day, and it's been fun to kind of see it come together. And, and the, the lights are on in the evening. People sit around there, maybe reading a book or eating or dinner. Yeah, there's been a few warm days at lunch that yeah. three three of the six I've seen people at already. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know uh, if you guys have to do a lot to keep it clean or anything like that, but it uh, it'll be just on our regular checklist of the park. But yes, we'll we'll, we'll have to clean it. And with reservations on the weekends, we're probably going to work out a schedule with a part-time staff to go out and make sure before their rental on a Saturday that it's yeah. up to par and ready to go. How's, how's the capacity on the sports facilities? We got room for all the mom male people that want to participate in sports, pretty much. I know. I know soccer has grown. I know all of them have grown, but as of right now, with baseball and softball, I haven't gotten their numbers. But everything else seems to be right on par. Yeah, we we don't do any facility sharing right now, like soccer players playing. In no, the everybody's field. on their own at their own facilities. Everybody's got their their yeah. own deal. Okay. Uh, any. Uh, do all these facilities pretty much uh, go unscathed as far as vandalism and things like no. that? No. Nope. <laughs> no. a problem. It's, uh, it's different each year. Some years we have more and some years we don't have hardly any. So it's just kind of a up and down. Uh, the past year, we it was very minimal. Uh, some years it's every weekend at Lake Williston we've had issues, but uh, last year was pretty good. All right. That's all I've got. Thank you very much. Right. Council Member Timmons. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the timing on the painting for the park on the river was perfect because it's a downtime. Yeah, the, the painting was easy. <coughs> All the taping off was the a lot of windows. <laughs> and <laughs> Lowe's windows. The guys did a great job. Thank you. Okay. I'll let them know. Council Member Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, you know, you talked about fees for this, the new pavilions and um, some of the other things, the activities that you have going on. Is there any chance in the future that we're going to be able to do some of those fees online and read you know register online and do things more uh, it is a possibility I, i'm i'm pretty sure the uh, senior center has started doing some of yeah. that so we'll That's probably kind of piggyback off them and kind of learn use. from their issues that they may have had but uh, that was my yeah because a lot of people ask exactly. about credit cards in the past it's always <clears throat> been kind of cost prohibitive yeah. but i think now it's it's getting a little closer yeah, I just, you know, so many people want to do things online, and, you know, uh, if a mom or a, a busy dad um, has a couple of minutes at work on lunch break, um, <laughs> they can, you know, just do it real quick online. Right, and and pretty like. much all the youth sports register online. Yeah. They have their own on the website. So. Thank you. You bet. Council Member Holt. I appreciate uh, oh, the report as well. I thought it was great. Uh, just out of curiosity, just wondered, have we had any vandalism throughout our park and system anywhere, any ball fields or restrooms or anything of that nature? Not just, lately, just but we've had, we have in the past, but nothing here within the last few months. 
Okay. Well, it's okay. Usually it slows down when it's a little cooler outside. They don't people don't. Yeah, have yeah, I imagine. But so in the <coughs> summertime, I, I didn't. I just wondered if you had to do any repairs and stuff like that. Most of the repairs are minor, mm -hmm. uh, like repainting or painting over some graffiti. Uh, a lot of it's just making a mess in the restrooms that have to be cleaned up. Councilmember Mosa. Now, how does the attendance at the uh, boat launching ramp <coughs> park on the river? Do you do you have uh, are a lot of people using that, or just a few? Or? I'm not I'm not out there when it's mm -hmm. used that much, but I know when we were working at uh, painting park on the river and it was cold, I was wondering because we had two or three people out there at a time during the week. Uh, yeah. So I'm pretty sure on weekends it's uh, it's being utilized, and it, this time of year and the next few months should pick up. should be the peak time. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, if there's no other questions for Mr. Rayburn, we'll excuse him. So. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, at this time we'll hear from Chief Williams. <clears throat> I don't ever get to come up here and give good news. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I guess I just wanted to take some of my time when I was talking to the mayor, but I'd get up here and say, well, we've been policing. Uh, but uh, seriously, uh, just a few things probably uh, a little out of the ordinary or a couple of them well out of the ordinary. We've had a, uh, a series of armed robberies where people are, a group of people that we've identified and charged are robbing people allegedly, because nobody's been to court yet, Mr. Norris, uh, allegedly robbing people who are selling marijuana. So <clears throat> they are uh, arranging a marijuana transaction and then robbing the person that has the marijuana. We've got uh, three different cases, two of them we've charged and cleared and have arrested six suspects. Uh, another one's pending, the investigation's pending, but I assume we will be arresting people on that shortly too. Uh, it's, uh, I know the first question when I ask who calls and reports an armed <laughs> robbery of your marijuana, but uh, one of the instances, uh, something was clearly wrong, and a parent really pressured the uh, the person who was uh, allegedly selling the marijuana to call the police. Uh, another one, the guy uh, was just became scared afterward and called us. And the third one, we're not getting quite the amount of cooperation we would want, as you can imagine. But it is a it's an unusual situation. It's not unheard of. Uh, we've experienced this before, but we are charging them and investigating and we have uh we know that they are using a firearm and a taser we recovered the taser we have not recovered the firearm uh, we've also made two fairly high profile cases uh, both involving arrest and parolees one of them was at walgreens on uh, january 22nd you may or may not have seen it uh, but we uh, arranged to have some drugs uh, brought to us through um, investigative means and arrested three people. One was a parolee with a firearm and the other two were uh, also uh, convicted felons. So, but they weren't our own parole. The other, uh, we uh, had a situation, we used this quite a bit. Y'all might not even know about it or, or aware of it. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the state legislature broadened the authority to search paro parolees and probationers' homes Traditionally, it had been just the parole officer and the probation officer that could search and they could take law enforcement with them, but that has since been brought into where any law enforcement official can uh, search a resident's home if he is a search waiver on file, which is a condition of release. And that was what happened in this particular case on Summit Drive, and we arrested two people there, uh, parolees, and went on the search warrant waiver. So uh, arrest-wise, uh, law enforcement, enforcement-wise, that's basically what we've been, that's the high points. Uh, the good news is uh, we have four officers uh, riding with field training officers now. They're all doing very well. And uh, Officer Cruz, who we all know, it, 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 <clears throat> it is possible that he will be back on full duty within the next week or two. I'm betting it'll be about another month. His therapist and his doctor are discussing that. The doctors are trying to get him back early. The therapist, and maybe not so much. 
I bet the therapist wins. But within a month, I bet he'll be back in full duty, which is an absolute miracle. And at that point, uh, the police department will be up to full speed and all, all positions will be covered and all officers will be out doing what they're, y'all are paying us to do. So it's looking good at the Maumelle Police Department. Thank you. <coughs> Council Member Saunders. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chief, just out of curiosity, um, how are we looking on home break-ins and car robberies? We're doing great till you just said that. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we've been doing okay on, uh, <laughs> on uh, burglaries. We, we all, there's, there's a, I'll tell it real quick. There is a, we were at a staff meeting and I was bragging on us for not having any residential burglaries. We had three that day. So uh, when somebody says residential burglars, we run and hide. We're doing very, very well in that area. Uh, we haven't had a real problem with um, auto break-ins yet. That comes in, that's streaky though, that comes in spurts. When they come and hit us, a, a, a crew gets to work and they'll hit neighborhoods and they'll hit 10 to 20 cars. Probably one fourth to half of those will call and report it. Most of the time, people who don't have much taken or anything taken but know somebody's been in their car, because it's been ransacked, don't call us. But uh, we have, uh, there's one residential burglary that we've had reported two, three weeks ago, and it's not a residential burglary. It's just a situation where somebody was confused. But, uh, but we are doing very well in the residential burglary department and haven't been hit real hard on our auto burglaries yet. And we may be, and, and I always hope on this, we may be getting to where we're locking our cars and taking the things out of it. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. Councilmember Mosley. Yeah, it, it sounds like our prevalent, mm -hmm. the most prevalent crime here in Mall Mills, drug related or, or buying right and now. selling of drugs or whatever is it? Would you say that? No, sir. I would still say property crimes and property theft is our most prevalent crime. Okay. Uh, and like I said, that comes in spurts. Now, th it's probably debatable whether that's drug related and how much of that's drug related because we know for a fact that uh, oftentimes drug addicts use other means to get drugs, and oftentimes that's theft, robberies, and that kind of thing. But property <coughs> crime and property theft is still our most common problem. Uh, but uh, yes, sir, we, we like all cities, uh, have a drug problem. And, and I've said many times, if you deny having a drug problem, you're living in denial, and it'll come back to get you. But yes, sir, we, we do have a drug problem, and it's prevalent, and we, we're well aware of that. Uh, as you know, all our officers carry Narcan. As you know, we have an opioid problem, uh, just like everybody else does, and we're fighting it and trying to identify those who are involved in the distribution and taking the appropriate actions. Uh, uh, when you mentioned, you know, people meet to, to do a drug deal or whatever, where, where are we most likely to have some? You mentioned one was done there at Walgreens that you all said. Well, now, that was because we scheduled it for that. There are oftentimes we will... <laughs> We'll, we'll plan places where we like and uh, where we have a strategic advantage and have places where the surveillance officers can get close. And like, I'm giving away too many secrets. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, no, we, uh, that's, that's, that, was, that wasn't done because of anything at Walgreens. That was done because we, we met there. Okay. We, we, we declared that meeting place. All right, that, that's all I've got. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you so much for your <clears throat> Yes, sir. And, Chief, you might want to mention about the safe mm -hmm. trading zone. It's not to do drug deals, but. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it will be if they keep robbing each other. No. Uh, yes, sir. That's, that's a neat thing. I wish, that was, I wish I'd have come up with that idea, and I didn't. But we have a uh, safe trading zone at the police department. If you are selling something on eBay or anything over the Internet, anywhere where you don't know the buyer or the seller, uh, we invite you to come to our, and we actually have signs there for two vehicles that reserve parking for that specific person where you can come and at least you're doing it on a police department parking lot, which would be a lot safer than just meeting at wherever the buyer or seller uh, wants to, to meet. We have not had a single time when somebody bought something stolen or just took something and drove off with it there. Now, it happens all over the place where people get hurt, uh, not physically hurt, but get burned on a uh, sale or buy or something and like that. And you have cameras out there too. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, and we let them know that. And like I said, in the, the two parking places are right out in my office where you can sit there and watch. And I watch them sit there and trade back and forth. <laughs> and it's kind of fun to watch them dicker you know, when, when they get to doing that. Councilmember Holt. Hey, Chief, is there a time when um, 
the robberies or burglaries or the these things are more likely, the drugs or whatever, do they happen in any part of the day more than another part of the day or any part of the week and sort of another part of the week? Or is there a trend of any kind that people might would look out for? Well, burglaries, residential burglaries are going to be during the day almost exclusively. That's a whole different problem if we have residential burglaries at night. That's a, that's a different cat right there. That's scary right there. Yes, sir. Uh, thefts, no, sir. There's no hours for that. And these particular, of course, you can't make a pattern of three, but um, our aggravated robberies, one was at night, one was during the day, and the other one was during daylight hours. So there's no particular day or time that that's prevalent more than the other. Auto burglaries, we know they occur between uh, after midnight, 1230 or so, until about four is uh, when we were, if we uh, have a rash of them, traditionally that's the hours that, uh, that they hit because that's the hours they expect most people to be asleep. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Chief. Thanks, Appreciate your report. Thank you, Chief. <coughs> all right, next item on the agenda is I need a motion from the floor to read all resolutions and ordinances by title only tonight. So moved. Second. Uh, is there a discussion on that motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed to no? Motion passes. Next item is unfinished business. We have the second reading of ordinance number 948 to revise a portion of the city code, section 264. Madam City Clerk, if you'll read that by title only. Be it enacted by the City Council of the City of Maumelle, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled <coughs> Ordinance Number 948, an ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the Maumelle City Code. There's no action required on that item. It is on second reading, and it will be on third reading at the next meeting. There's nothing further on that item. We'll move on to new business. We have item 10, uh, which is new business, and under it we have item A, which is the Planning Commission appointments. We had uh, two vacancies on the Planning Commission, and we had uh, both uh, commissioners that are currently serving on that commission reapply for their positions. And so uh, I don't know if the, the council wants to interview them or talk to them or <coughs> just want them to say something or what y'all want them to do, really. Uh, <coughs> Councilmember Mosley? I'd like for him to just say a few words and, and uh, that sort of thing. Just, and, okay. All right. And, uh, All right. Uh, so we'll just start the way, uh, the way they're listed here. So first we'll hear from Mr. Adrian Green. And he looks like he's... Uh, had an injury there, so. <clears throat> Adrian Green, 15, Choctaw Cove. Uh, first, I'd uh, like to apologize for my dress. I, I, I can do, I think I can do a little better than this, but, uh, uh, and I, my fellow planning, planning members can probably uh, vouch for me. Um, what I'm requesting is approval to continue with the planning commission. Um, it has allowed me to, to gain some, a lot of knowledge of the, uh, of the city codes. Uh, I began serving the planning commission in 2004. Um, it, it also allowed me to use a lot of my expertise. Most of y'all know that retired from Intergy, uh, 44 years, and it has allowed me to backfill into some of the information, especially during outages and those kind of things when uh, we had problems or whatever, I was able to offer my expertise to, uh, to, to the guys that's handling it. As a matter of fact, uh, during one of those periods, I was actually the manager and took care of everything in Maum Hill. Uh, then I moved on to Conway where uh, where I took over that, but I still stay involved. I still maintain a relationship with the with the managers, the supervisors, and the CSEM that's here. And when stuff happens, I I can call him and say, "Hey, man, what's going on?" And he'll say, "I'm talking to the mayor, man. I'm talking to the mayor." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so uh, some of my past history. Um, I, uh, I'm on the board of trustees of Rock of Ages Missionary Baptist Church, which is right over here. I'm on a executive board of directors for International Lyman all over the world, 
where we interact with them and they compete and uh, we do uh, uh, activities every year in the central part of America. So I've been on that board since uh, 1989. Um, and I'm also involved, getting involved in a, it's a new um, uh, thing to this area, which is the uh, Arkansas Council of the Urban League. It's a guilds. It's older uh, people that getting involved with the Urban League. And um, we have a statewide organization now, which is complied of um, uh, several different uh, uh, people from Tyson uh, and uh, Sherman Tate, which is one, I don't know if y'all might know Sherman Tate, but they're all on this board. And so I'm, I'm signing, I have met with them a couple of times. Uh, so, and I'm married to Barbara Green. Uh, <laughs> and we have uh, one child. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't supposed to be like this. Um, this um, I had a little mishap as um, uh, I went in for just a heart valve clip, but um, it didn't work out that way. So uh, I'm still working with them. Thank you very Any much. Questions. Jip. All right. Hey, Councilmember Mosley has a question. Yeah, I, I just I just wanted to thank you for all the time you've served on the on the planning commission. This would be your third term, is that correct? Well, I don't know. I quit counting them, man. I started in 04. <laughs> so okay. they for four year terms. Maybe, so. maybe four, yeah, I don't know. But yep. Anyway, yeah, it looks like uh, my gosh, you started as uh, with APNL back there in nineteen seventy two. You've had you had quite a long career doing Yeah, I did. I did. I've worked uh, in several different spots, Russellville, Jacksonville. Uh, TCBY building when it was TCBY. <laughs> uh, I, I look forward to your, another four-year term. For you. Right. Thank well, you. I've been sitting a little while, so if y'all if y'all don't mind, I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna probably ease on because this is my first day out. Uh, uh, Councilmember Timmons uh, wants to say something. I think. Sorry, Mr. Green. No, I'm making sure we just appreciate your service. That um, and and we're excited about your decision to continue. As a planning commission. And I think he's uh, shown us how important it is to him. He showed up here tonight That's when right. he probably could That's have been right. better off staying I'm at home. Very so. grateful to, to the city uh, for you know that it, what has it shown me and allowed me to to uh, to do. And so uh, I talked. I was talking to Jim and I and he said you don't want me to read that for you. And I said well no I'll probably send Barbara. But <laughs> <laughs> you've been quite an asset. <clears throat> All right, at this time, we'll hear from Mr. Craig Johnson. Good evening, Council Members and Mayor. Uh, my name is Craig Johnson, 3 Sierra Valley Cove here in Maumel. I've been a resident uh, since uh, 2000. I built two homes here. Um, I've been on the Planning Commission since 07. I replaced Mayor Watson uh, when he decided to, to take the seat that he occupies today. Uh, I'll, this will be my third appointment of practicing engineer, uh, 21 years, licensed for 17 because you have to practice for four years. First, before you take the licensing exam, I primarily practice in water and wastewater uh, treatment, c conveyance. Uh, so I very rarely have a, a conflict when it comes to that with, with the commission. I actually served as your city engineer, uh, I think from 03 to 05 or maybe 04, 05, somewhere through there and was involved in several projects. And then I've uh, been on the, the uh, Planning Commission uh, since 07. I've served, and you guys saw my resume, uh, did the Bond Council. Uh, I've heard several contentious issues uh, as well, too. I'm actively involved uh, in my professional organizations uh, as well, too. And I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have of me. Councilmember Mosley. I'm just I'm just very happy to have somebody uh, your experience and caliber on our planning commission. Thank you. I I probably come to more. I don't come to every one, but I probably come to more than anybody else. And, and I always uh, appreciate your your uh, questioning and your your thoroughness and, and all all things that come before that. Thank and, you. Uh, appreciate that. I do have one thing. I just kind of wanted it. It was on your resume here. What is the Arkansas Select Society? Society of Sanitary Sludge <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a it's a peer. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you the secret handshake after the council meeting. No, it's a, it's a uh, it's a peer recognition. Uh, it comes from our uh, wastewater industry uh, through the Arkansas Water Environment Association. And it's a peer recognition for uh, involvement on a volunteer basis to help support the organization, support the industry. 
Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, you, you get invited to participate into that organization based upon your uh, volunteer and peer, your, if your peers thinks that you're worthwhile uh, in your organization. Then I'll have to say, if you ever see an initiation, it, it's, it's quite rougher than you think that it might be. They roast you pretty good. So the, the cats come out of the bag uh, when, when you're initiated. Well, and if it's literally what they do, you can go out to our treatment plant right now and watch them shovel some of that sludge with a <laughs> trico right well, now. They don't so. make you do that, but it's, <laughs> it's mimicked with sand, so, but it does have a little bit of connotation to that. All right. again, again, thank you for your service. Please. You're welcome. I enjoy it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. <clears throat> Okay, if there's no other discussion or any questions, uh, I guess I'd entertain a motion that we reappoint Mr. Adrian Green and Mr. Craig Johnson to their positions on the Planning Commission. So moved. Second. second. We, have, we have a motion and a second to reappoint Mr. Adrian Green and Mr. Craig Johnson to the Planning Commission in their same positions. Is there a discussion on that motion? Is it okay to do them both at the same time? Okay. Um, if, not, if there's no other discussion or questions, uh, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. Motion passes. <clears throat> Next item is uh, Council Member Kelly's resignation letter. You have a copy of uh, uh, Council Member <coughs> Kelly, former Council Member Kelly's resignation letter. He came by last week and uh, dropped it off at my office. And uh, so he was, his house had closed that day, so he was actually moving his final pieces of furniture out and all that. So uh, technically he has vacated his position and so the council <coughs> will need to make a motion to accept his resignation. And then I think we'll need a motion to declare a vacancy on the city council. So moved. Well, uh, second. Well, okay. Well, which one? But I'm, well, I think we need two motions, so hold on just a second. Council Member Anderson? Uh, I was making a motion. Okay. So. To, Okay. To right. uh, accept his resignation. Okay. All right. So we need a motion to accept the resignation of uh, former council member Kelly. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a motion and second to accept the resignation of council member Kelly. Is there any discussion in, on that motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion passes. And now I'd entertain a motion to declare a vacancy on the city council in Ward two position, well, Ward two. <clears throat> so moved. Do I hear a second? <laughs> we have a motion and a second to declare a vacancy on the council. Uh, is there a discussion on that motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. Motion passes. The, uh, and I guess there's uh the way this would, would occur uh, is we will have, uh, we have an advertisement that's already running for city council members. Uh, in fact, we've already received a couple of applications for it. And at the next meeting, the plan would be to appoint that person to the, uh, the position that has been vacated. Um, so that would be at the it's a Tuesday night, so it would be at the 20th, uh, February the 20th is when that meeting would actually occur. Council Member Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know in the past we've had some precedent where um, we had uh, a vacancy and the council decided to move the sitting elected alderman to that position so that the next person who was appointed in that position, that vacated position, would run in the next election, the next coming election. And after talking to um, City Attorney Norris, um, that was handled in the past, but we, there's kind of a little more of a fold to it. Um, and I was wondering if we, if I could ask uh, City Attorney Norris to kind of explain that a little bit more. And in that, I would like to offer uh, or ask the council to to consider me um, being able to move over into that position and, and then vacating my position so that the next person who's appointed can run in the next election. But I'll let, uh, I'll ask uh, City Attorney Norris to explain that a little bit better. He's a little more articulate when it comes to that than, than I am. <laughs> I don't know if that's 
<clears throat> or not. Uh, we use the term move, or I've heard swap seats, and I think both of those are really a misnomer in that there's no provisions under law that would allow the council to just move the person f over from one seat to the next. Uh, essentially what would happen is at the next city council meeting, the city council will appoint someone to fill the vacancy that was just declared. Uh, there's nothing that I have found that would prevent the council from appointing uh, a current alderman or council member to that seat. Uh, but then effectively what happens is it's a new appointment. Uh, if the council decided to do that, uh, uh, council member Anderson would have to resign his current seat that would then declare a vacancy. And then at the following meeting is when the council would choose to make that appointment, if that's what the council wanted to do. Um, but I know in the past, I, I believe it was done just at one meeting where it, it felt more like a swap. And I think that we should do it by the numbers as much as possible if that's what the council wants to do. And so I thought it'd be better to bring that up at this meeting rather than wait until that was facing the council. Well, I appreciate you uh, explaining that. And, and the reason that I want to do that is because I wanted to keep that good faith of um, allowing uh, the, the citizens of our ward to be able to, to elect that next official. And also, I've um, unfortunately had a, a, you know, four or five months of my life kind of taken away um, through, through illness. And so I, I, there's still some things that I would like to get done. And I don't necessarily want to, uh, to go for an, another t full term. So this, this kind of situation would actually work well for me if the council were, you know, would, would like to move forward with that. If not, then that's fine, too. But um, I just wanted to offer that. Uh, and then uh, give plenty of notice to, to, to the public, you know. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Anderson. Councilmember <coughs> Mosley. I'd like to ask for a clarification from City Attorney Norris. Uh, if uh, if uh, Councilmember uh, Anderson go, should go ahead and put his name in, I would assume it would be as, as a contender for that, that position, in other words, he would be considered at the meeting just like any other uh, candidate would uh, be interviewed and all that sort of thing. To me, that would be the proper way to do that because uh, these people have applied for these position, this position and they should be able to compete for it. Is, is that what you're envisioning? Well, it's really up to the council, but that's, that's how I envisioned it. I think in the past, the move was done before they interviewed folks. And so I think it's important to know that the position that is vacant is position one in Ward 2. And how the council chooses to go about filling that is up to the council. Traditionally, it's been folks coming in, applying, and then a selection being made. Okay. Well, I would, I would strongly encourage us to interview anybody that applies for the position and, and make our decision accordingly as if everybody's equal. And uh, uh, I, I guess I, I would urge uh, Council Member Anderson to just go ahead and serve out his current term and and uh, uh, and run. I think I think uh, uh, voters should have the ability to, to to look at aldermen every four years. So that's that's my personal opinion. Okay. Thank you, Council Member Mosley. Council Member Holt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor in all due absolutely support to my uh, associate alderman uh, Anderson and I and I do support it my uh, him and he's done a remarkable job in his service the point that I see is that we are elected for a four-year term and what this does is extends the amount of time that we are appointed my my tenure is due up in December and should a similar situation happen that I would extend it on and I may wind up we I've seen it happen before in this council where a person became an alderman for six years and and it's it sets a precedent that we suddenly have someone who moves on and I agree with you and I know uh, <laughs> uh, fault whatsoever in that position um, we we saw in a in a sim if you were to resign at this point, in my opinion, it would leave the position open so that we could have other people come in and compete with you for your for your next position again. And 
it it really just muddies up the water, in my opinion. And I I would be opposed to it, and I would vote no on the on the vote. So I just wanted you to know. I, I feel like that it overextends an individual's um, stay, and there is not justification to make that happen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Holt. <coughs> is there any other? Oh. Councilmember Saunders. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, just to make this crystal clear, <coughs> the reason that we have done this in the past, and that's how I ended up in this seat instead of that one, um, so I'm quite familiar with it. The idea is we want we want appointed people in that seat that they're appointed to a minimal amount of time, okay? For example, uh, Alderman, or Council Member Kelly's position, or seat, um, if we appoint someone to that seat, they're gonna be in that seat for almost three years and they weren't Full elected time. to the seat, they were appointed to the seat. So what we've done in the past is take the other aldermen and allow them to occupy that seat to minimize the amount of time. That means that the appointee, if there was this rotation here, that means that the appointee that we're going to appoint soon will only be there until the end of this year, you see, instead of three years, because they weren't elected by the people. So I just want to make that real clear why we have done that. <coughs> okay, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Williams. It just seems to me that um, the, the circumstances with your illness that knocked you out for four or five months, um, there are some things that, you know, we as a council have started and want to see through. And um, I would support that. You're talking about the, com the competition. They would still be competing for your seat, but not necessarily that one. But they would still, every, all the applicants would still be duly noted and have their opportunity to apply. I don't think that would knock anybody out of the running, per se. But I think if we didn't have that five months, five or six months of downtime that we, um, that we need to kind of catch up. Yeah. Thank you, Councilmember Williams. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. And, and my intention was not to you know, get an extension on, on my four-year term. And I did run two, cons two, uh, two elections, and, and I was elected uh, in two elections. I, I, didn't, I had opponents in both elections. So I feel like, you know, I, I, I don't want to say I paid my dues or anything like that because everybody should do that every four years. But I feel like that I was elected by the People Award, um, too, and that I want the person who's getting appointed to go through that same vetting process by the people in the, in the closest election that's coming up, which is in November. And we've already had a precedent that was set before that. The council did that on several occasions. And so it wasn't anything that's new. I just, I supported a more open way to do this instead of doing the switch as, uh, uh, as uh, city of, uh, Norris said, City Attorney Norris, I supported being more open and, and apparent about the whole process instead of it looking more like, I don't know, a good old boy system or something. What we are trying to do here is just to make it, it's a precedent that's already been set, and then make it more, more open and lawful and give the opportunity for the people of Ward 2, which is the ward that I represent, to elect the next person instead of having someone appointed for four, almost a full term. That, that was the reason why I wanted, you know, to, to put my name in for that. Um, <clears throat> not as much to, uh, to extend. I think some of the things that I wanted to, to get done within my, uh, my tenure here, I could probably do as a, as a citizen too. Um, but it, you know, it's just, it's just kind of an added thing that, uh, you know, I've lost four months of time that, that I could have been working on uh, some things that I think are very important for the city, but um, that's just the way it is, you know. Illness just comes up and bites you sometimes. 
but mainly it's because I want to give the opportunity for the citizens of Ward to to elect their um, next alderman uh, instead of having one appointed to them for four years, almost four years. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Holt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, it has, if we're going to do that, I feel like that we should pass an ordinance that this city council has an ordinance in place that when this kind of situation arises, that that is a, a movement that the city council has already approved of, and let's make it official. Let's don't just maneuver around it each time come around. I was elected and no one voted for me. It was three days before the time to get on the ballot, and I had to scramble around and get names, and I, I got elected and nobody voted for me. And, and Alderman Williams, uh, our city council member Williams, had to, she had to turn around and, and be elected after she got appointed because it was too late to get on the ballot already. So it was beyond, she had no choice. Um, and I, as I recall, Alderman, our city council member, that's a new thing, I'll never get used to it. Um, he also had to turn around and, and be elected. It, it's one of those unfortunate things that it's there. And again, I, my heart goes out, please understand, I, I thank God. I don't have the burden or didn't have that you've had, so please know that that's, uh, I, I would do anything in the world to, to change it otherwise. But it is, a, it is a, a, a process in the city council and the government that we need to either have a rule that we do it or we don't do it and don't just play around with it. Well, you know, it's because it can be a wind up of friendship, buddy, you know, type thing. And, and I, I just think it <coughs> takes the whole system down. So. That's my thought, Mr. Mayor. Sorry if I get all rattled. I will tell you, you did get some votes. I mean, you got, there's a checklist for all unopposed candidates. So uh, you did receive a vote or two. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Council Member Mosley. I, I agree with uh, everything Alderman, uh, City Council Member Holt saying over there. Uh, let me ask, as far as president, uh, when the uh, uh, Council Member Timmons seat came up was was that uh, would uh, alderman lewis have been able to move over into her spot uh he didn't he didn't apply for that he, when when did that occur did that occur with more than two years no his his was the next election no he he never ran for re-election well, that's what i mean but yeah. there was no because that spot was the next election no no because timmons replaced Miss Scott, uh, Miss Scott. Oh, yeah. And so, and then uh, it was uh, Council Member Williams replaced Council Member Lewis. So, was, did you have more than two years on your term when you took over? I can't remember. Was it less than two? Less than two. Less, uh, about the one and a half. You were in it for one and a half, okay, so there so was two and a half. You yeah. been in it for two and a half, so it would have been advantageous for. Alderman Lewis to have moved over, and he didn't. He didn't ask to do that. So, the the president hadn't been there on every every council member. That's what I'll what I'll say. So, just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, so, the basically what we'll do is we will we will appoint somebody to Ward Two's <laughs> position. <laughs> Next at the next meeting so so be prepared to vote on somebody i'm not going to say who or where or what so no you, you you'll be vote, you'll be appointing a person to all uh council member kelly's former position is what you'll be doing at the next meeting council member anderson it's my understanding that it has to be a majority of the um council that votes for it so uh, when we have more than two applicants, then that gets a little, um, I know in the past there was some confusion to that. Um, City Attorney Norris might be able to tell me more, tell more about how that works too. On It has to be the majority, not just the person that gets the most votes, correct? Correct. And I think that's the way we've been handling it recently is uh, it has to be the majority of the remaining aldermen or council members, not necessarily whoever gets the most votes. Which isn't always the same thing, but when you have three or four. 
Okay. Moving on, we have the first reading of ordinance number 949 to amend the master zoning map. Madam, <coughs> Madam City Clerk, if you'd read that by title only. Be it enacted by the City Council of the City of Maumel, County of Pulaski, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled Ordinance Number 949, an ordinance amending the Maumel zoning map and for other purposes. Okay, um, this went before the Planning Commission uh, two weeks ago, and uh, so they gave a due pass recommendation. You got a copy of those minutes. Uh, emailed to you after the initial um, city council packet went out, but you got those minutes. And so uh, Mr. Neri is here, and we also have uh, several representatives from the company that wants to move there and also from the uh, owners of the building. I believe you're currently owners. Is that correct? You're, you're, there's, they're working to own the building anyway if they don't currently. So working on the building so uh to here to speak too if anybody so mr neri why don't you start and then i'll let you uh give a recap of the planning commission and then you can uh introduce the the gentleman and thank you mr mayor jim neri director of planning and zoning all the food groups as i told the mayor earlier today are, are represented <coughs> and some of these gentlemen keep flying down from minnesota time after time to to work with me and the planning commission and address them and they've done the same thing for you all tonight and you'll see them again actually we have uh, clark Irwin with colliers who's brokering the property interstate development as you heard the mayor say who will own the building and then finally the industrial use that's uh wanting to locate their stericycle. So at this point, I would probably ask a representative for interstate and a representative from stericycle to join me here at the podium. And if you would just state your name for an address for the record, please. Uh, Mayor Watson, members of the council, I'm Eric Simmer with Interstate Development Corp, uh, Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Thank you for taking the time to hear our application. <laughs> yeah, good evening. Donald Kaminsky, Regional Vice President with Stericycle, uh, currently residing in Olive Branch, Mississippi. Thank you very much. Well, Eric and Donald are going to take this over for now, so I'm going to turn this over to them, and I'm sure they can answer any questions you all have. Again, thank you very much for hearing our application. It's been our pleasure to come down and work with staff on what we feel is a very exciting um, project, not only for Stericycle, but for the community and certainly for us. Uh, we stand ready to answer any questions you may have regarding our application. And thank you. Council Member Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know that um, in, in reading the notes from uh, the Planning Commission, uh, there were some questions about um, storing uh, volatile chemicals on site um, and I just wanted to know what it is that that you guys are doing in the, uh, there and why that's being stored I, I, they probably had a little more back information than the, than the council might have had and what involves I know it, that you didn't think that it, uh, or it, it was said that 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 those chemicals wouldn't be stored for any long periods of time so if you could just tell me a little bit of what it is that's going on there and and why the why that that was a question maybe you want me to answer that? please sure uh, the primary purpose of the building is for paper shredding so shred it is part of the stericycle operations so we we collect we bring the material back to it'll be a plant-based shredder so we'll shred and bale the paper products typically that product will be going out within 24 hours baled paper uh, approximately two trailers per day per day will be going out uh, to the recycleries and on the other side of the business is the health care the health care is regulated in medical waste not chemicals okay. and that follows the US DOT guidelines which means they have to be packaged within the US DT, DOT guidelines <coughs> collected brought back to the it'll be a transfer site which typically is you bump the dock you bring the product around into a trailer trailer heads out typically within 24 hours in the treatment site that's closest here that stair cycle owns is in memphis tennessee perfect thank you council member mosley um 
Yeah, I was kind of keying in on some of the same things as Council Member Anderson. <laughs> um, okay, this this medical waste. This is uh, this is the the hazardous waste. Um, you say it, it comes it, in comes in packaged. Uh, do you all unpackage it? No, we do not. It, it stays in the primary package from the customer location. So it'll it'll come in on a collection vehicle, which is typically like a 26 foot box truck. It'll bump the dock. It'll be hand carted into the trailer, and the trailer will go out. So no, there, there's no handling uh, opening of the containers. There's no removal of the waste on site. Okay, what uh, what would happen if there were a fire? Is there is there something about that material that, if burned, would it contaminate the area? Would uh, we had a uh, ethanol facility that wanted to come in, and we actually. One of the reasons that uh, we're against having that would be that if they had a fire uh, and it burned their material, it could contaminate some of the uh, uh, sanitary uh, environments that we have with some of the other industrials industrial. within the neighborhood. Okay. Would, uh, would this be a concern? You're, first, we will not be storing any regulated medical waste within the facility. Mm -hmm. So it'll be held in the trucks and or the trailer but not within the facility. So the fire hazard there would be paper products, and, and that would be the concern is the, for the paper products. Okay, well it could, you know, I guess if a truck's parked right next to the dock or whatever it could Oh, happen. definitely, yes. Yeah, and, and, and at that point, um, volatile um, releases, uh, you're basically, you do have some chemotherapy waste. It, it would be trace. Um, mainly it, it's gauze, um, Everything that's being disposed within a hospital environment, a lot of paper products, um, blood that's been soaked into uh, gauze, et cetera. Some Sharps product also. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Neri, did the Planning Commission or did you look into this sort of thing? Is there is there any danger if, if a fire should break out? Uh, some of the meetings that the, the gentleman here with me have actually had was with Fire Marshal Payne. And he's well aware of uh, what their product is, how it's going to be distributed, and how long it'll be on site. As a matter of fact, if memory serves me correctly, the entirety of that 36,000 square foot building is actually sprinkled. If you read the staff analysis, uh, you can see that it's the charge of staff to consider what is the best use of that land. Since 1994, that land has uh, supported a distribution center with an industrial use. It's been Nabisco, it's been Kraft, it's been Mondelez, a distribution center for foodstuffs. It's one of the few areas in Maumel that has a dual land use, both industrial and commercial. And it's been that way since the inception of the land use map in the late 80s. So when those people got together and put together our zoning map and our land use plan at that point, they still had the vision then uh, to leave the flexibility that this could be industrial someday. Plus it's bordered on three sides by industrial uses and surrounded by industrial streets. So staff's recommendation was a due pass to you all because in the opinion of staff, the industrial use is the best use of this land. Any type of CO uh, before these gentlemen from Stericycle can move into this building, they'll have to satisfy all the fire marshal uh, pain and the fire department's regs and the Arkansas fire code and the building codes anyway, or they won't be moving in. I'm pretty confident that if you all pass this rezoning, they'll be moving in. So. All right. What what requires this rezoning anyway? What uh, why why do why why are we having to pursue this? <clears throat> East of the boulevard, in property that's zoned PCD, planned commercial district, it will allow for a little bit of warehousing use as a conditional use. In 1994, for whatever reason, when Nabisco moved into that property, the conditional use process was not followed, nor was a development plan submitted to the then city board. It was a straight site plan. Plus, there is a, a, another thing that would be tough for any new tenant to overcome. In all of our commercial districts, including PCD, there's a little something called the commercial building design. 
something you're probably more familiar with, uh, Council Member Mosley, than most of the rest of the council is because you come to the Planning Commission meetings. The Commercial Building Design Ordinance means that 65% of the facade of a building must be comprised of what we call high quality material. There's a whole list of that in Section 94, things like wood, brick, native stone, drive it, ephus, glass, on and on and on. This building, and I have been there and touched it and felt it, is smooth face concrete. All of it, all of the facade, and that is not allowable in the commercial district. Commercial building design uh, was not submitted either in 1994. So unless you wanted to see other applicants constantly going through the conditional use process over and over each time a new tenant would want to become a partner with Mall Mel, and someone would have to recover the entirety of that huge building in some type of high quality material, hence the rezoning request. And once again, in my opinion, industrial use is certainly the best use of this land, as that's how it's been since 1994 for the past 23 years anyway. Okay, so, so a lot of this rezoning is really just housekeeping and getting this more in line with with just the building itself and, and that sort of thing. It's it, the, the fact that we're changing tenants doesn't necessarily make it required. It no, sir. Okay. No, sir. I think this probably should have been done uh, in the past, and it's my understanding from those who were here before me that that had been discussed. It had just never been acted on. And it's certainly in keeping... Uh, with our municipal plan, with our land use and zoning maps, and also the strategic plan as well. Okay. If somebody else has a question, go ahead. I'm yeah. checking my notes. I wanted to say one thing. The medical waste that's going to be at this facility is the same medical waste that's in the doctor's office and dentist office that are currently in Maumelle. Now, it's going to be concentrated in a trailer, but it, it's the same medical waste. It's not like they're going out and finding something from some foreign, you know, guess, place or something uh, like and that. And I guess so. a lot of my uh, curiosity was whether you all would be destroying or, or handling that waste in any way, but you've, you've indicated it's just a transfer. So that, that's alleviated, alleviated a lot of my, my questions there. Uh, somebody else have a question, go right ahead. Council Member Holt. Gentlemen, I was just wondering how many employees would we have in the in the facility? Approximately. Uh, approximately 50 employees. Good. Uh, the uh, trucks that would be going in out are they are they tanker type trucks or are they 18 wheeler cargo trucks or is there a variety of what? Yeah, what? There, there is. So um, mainly the straight trucks, which we call 26 foot with a box on the back of it, right. they would be uh, dispatched between 5 a.m., oh, okay. 11 a.m., right. and then four, about four tractor trailers per day will be exiting the facility. Okay, good. All right, no problem. All right, all right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. <coughs> Council Member Mosley. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to kind of grill you guys because uh, we just we went through a big deal with uh, an ethanol plant, and I just want to make sure we weren't missing anything. And I... And I, and I trust Mr. Neri and the fire department will, will do all the uh, due diligence necessary on, on that sort of thing. So uh, I'm, at this point, I'm not going to object to what you're doing. So. Well, and the, the volume of the ethanol facility is a lot more okay. than what we're talking about here. I, just, so, yeah. just, yeah. I saw that word hazardous, and so okay. uh, kind of did what uh, Council Member Anderson did, kind of zoned in on that. But I, I welcome you all here, and I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Anderson, do you have a question? Oh, I just, I'm just uh, making a motion that we accept. It's, it's the first reading oh, of the first ordinance. Reading, I'm sorry. We're going to have to get you back in. I know. i got to get back in the swing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I apologize, they, guys. We're going to make them come back at least one more time. But, yeah, they, they may have to come back three times That's or two more times. That's up to them. But, no, we can't do that until the third yeah. reading. So oh, Sorry. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We appreciate y'all coming down, and maybe our weather's a little warmer than it is. Marginally. Marginally. <laughs> a couple times I've been here. Uh, <clears throat> All right, moving on to mayor's comments. Uh, just wanted to mention the, the Mama Area Chamber of Commerce Banquet. Uh, very good event. Had 
400, 450 people there, something like that at the Maumelle Event Center, but it's a very good uh, event. But just to let y'all know that uh, our uh, Center on the Lake, Maumelle Senior Wellness is direct, Maumelle Senior Services Director, Nicole Vogler, was Person of the Year by the Chamber. So, very well uh, and a lot of it was due to the hard work that she's done on that center and everything. So I did think it was well deserved. So, yeah, but it was a good, a good night. Uh, next item is Central Arkansas Water Transition Update. Uh, I received an email today. Actually, it's the first email I've received regarding the Central Arkansas Water Transition. And uh, it was saying that his water got turned on on Monday and he immediately noticed a difference in the taste and the smell of the water. Now, I don't know if it actually got to his faucet in that same day, but, I, you know, but, it, but that's what the, it said. So, but uh, they've been doing it the whole month of January, transitioning over to where everybody in Maumelle is now receiving the water that's coming from the treatment plant that's on the other side of the river over here at the Pleasant Valley Treatment Plant. Jack Wilson is what they call it, but I call it Pleasant Valley because it's located within Pleasant Valley. But so the water took, it took a month and five phases, but now everybody in Maumelle should be drinking and using Central Arkansas water. And they didn't get a single call and they didn't get a single email about brown water, discolored water, uh, and I didn't receive any. So I think it went through without a hitch. Uh, I know they worked with the industries to make sure their processes continued on. But as far as I can tell, no news is good news because there was not any issues that I'm aware of. Now, you know, after saying this, somebody may tell me something that happened at their house and they just didn't report it, but I've not heard of anything. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, didn't really have any complaints. I did have some questions whether it's a softer water than our water. Um, I, I had no idea. I just had to go by, you know. Well, it's surface water and it has less minerals in it, so I think it's going to be softer, I think would be the correct pH that's, on that. That's what I said, and I just wanted to make sure that I might have been well, correct. <laughs> and I think there's some correlation to your detergents. You can use less yes. of it or, or something yes, if it's so. softer water. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> and then I've got some other things that have just come up since the uh, we put out the agenda. Uh Chief Williams didn't mention it, so I have to mention it. Uh, Thursday night into Friday morning sometime, the revenue office next door to us right here was broken into, and so they broke the front glass out of the front door, and they entered the facility and stole, some, stole a check and some money that was used for change, cash money that was taken out of the facility. But I will tell you that the, the window replacement cost more than the money they took. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, we do have... Uh, they, the police department was able to get fingerprints and things like that, and, and we think we may have a video from the assessor's office that may identify the individuals also. So, uh, but just to let you know that it, it uh, we talked about break-ins and all that and residential break-ins. This was an office break-in that was done sometime during the night, you know, while we were closed. So, <clears throat> and. Uh, also, uh, Thursday night, I attended a, an event at the Maumelle Center on the Lake, and it was their volunteer appreciation dinner. So they honored over 150 volunteers at that event. So uh, that tells you how many staff members we don't have to hire. Uh, right. So uh, because they, they invited over 200 volunteers, but over 150 showed up to uh, have a tailgate party before the Super Bowl is what it was pegged as but a lot of good volunteers, and some of them had over 500 hours of volunteer service. So that's a part-time job, basically. During a year, they had 500 hours of part-time of volunteer service, so that was a great event. And then the last thing I need to ask is, we have a traffic committee meeting that we need to hold to hear a uh, request that's been made with a, uh, the police department and the uh, or Maumelle Charter School. And so it's uh, this intersection right up here. And so that is Ward 3 council members. And so what I, I, I looked because of uh, various events with the city council moving and things like that, would the 26th of February be available to y'all, which is a Monday night, three weeks from tonight. So if y'all would let me know, but uh, the, the traffic committee is made up of the council members that are in that ward 
And then it's made up of the police chief, the public works director, and the mayor is who makes up the traffic committee. Now, we had one a while back, and the intersection hit all hit three wards. Yeah. It hit three wards, I believe. So we had six council members sitting on that committee. But it's supposed to only be the two that are affected by it now. It's open to the public, and we'll notice the meeting and all that. But uh, if y'all could let me know this week so that we can get it noticed. I am too. You okay? Yes. Okay. All right. So... That's probably when it'll be is the 26th of uh, February at 6 p.m. in this room right here. But we'll put out a public notice and it'll be included in the next council packet. So that's all I have. Uh, Planning Commission report, and that's City Attorney Norris. Yes, the Planning Commission's only agenda item was the Master Zoning Map amended, Amendment, which they recommended that this City Council pass. And that's the one we just discussed when we were talking about 949. That is all. All right. Council members' comments? Council member Anderson? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to publicly thank everyone that um, uh, prayed for me and um, wished me well uh, during my process of um, sickness. And it, it it's overwhelming how much the community... Um, pours out to you in, in times of need, and, and that's why I love this community so much um, in many ways. So I just wanted to say thank you um, for your well wishes. We're so glad you're back with us. Thank you. Council Member Mosley? Uh, yeah, I'd, I wanted to share. I'd, I uh, had never met with anybody with uh, Metro Plan uh, before, and I'd called up uh, Tab Council and, and met with him a couple of months ago. I think it was back in early December. And uh, he was, he's, a, he's the former mayor of uh, Conway. Yeah. Uh, he's he's has cool. some of the similar things that he's dealt with there in Conway, such as uh, what we're trying to do with our third entrance and uh, annexation and uh, uh, commercial activity and just, uh, you know, all that sort of thing. And I had several questions, just tried to, Tried a million. Fortunately, he had plenty of time. We sat there for an hour, hour and a half, and just visited about a number of things. And one thing he uh, he came up with was, uh, uh, it, of course, he told me what all Metro Plan does and what how they got started, which is a very interesting story. And uh, he, he also talked about impact fees. Uh, they uh, used impact fees in Conway, which I wasn't aware of. Uh, does anybody know what impact fees are? Uh, what that is is uh, in a town that's growing rapidly, uh, you can there, there's a thing called impact fees. You can attach a fee to new development. For example, uh, when somebody takes out a building permit to build something like a new house, uh, there would be an impact fee assigned to that. It would be collected, and it would go to... Uh, uh, fund things like sewer infrastructure uh roads things like that and uh, I've, I've thought about what all he talked about he uh, what they did there in conway is they had all these new neighborhoods on the outskirts of town and uh just had little farm roads going out to them well somebody's going to have to pay to to bring those roads up to standard so what they did is they imposed impact fees on all that new development and then use that money to either pay off the bonds that it took to do those roads or hmm. to, to fund them. I don't know if, it, and I'm not sure about the mechanism. That's, I want to know more. And, uh, but the idea is to lessen the impact on the current residents of growth. Uh, in, in my mind, uh, the current residents of the community should not have to continually pay for uh, infrastructure and new things that come up uh, when you're a rapidly growing community. In other words, the, the growth itself should should contribute back to some of the infrastructure it takes to make that happen. So that's that's the theory behind it. And what I would like to do, uh, I asked uh, uh, Mr. Townsell if he would, uh, if he speaks, and he said, sure, if your council would invite me to come, he said, I'd be happy to come, and I'd what I'd like to do is, is issue him an invitation, ask the mayor to make a motion, I'll make a motion here in a minute, to ask the mayor to extend an invitation for him to come and speak, tell us about Metro Plan, what they do, what their purposes are, how they've facilitated the interstate uh, uh, 
road system and, and how that's evolved over the years. And then also to touch on this impact fees and what his, uh, what his experience has been and, and whether he thought it was successful or not there in Conway. So anyway, uh, I'd make a motion, I'd like to make a motion that we invite uh, Mr. Townsell to come to the first uh, council meeting that he's available to in the future and speak, I guess, just as a special guest on our agenda. Okay, we have a motion and a second to have uh, for me to invite uh, Mr. Tab Townsell to come and speak to the City Council at the next at the first meeting that he is available. First Council meeting he's available. We might not do February's even if he's available because that's the State of the City address that night. So, okay, what, yeah. what meeting March? That? <laughs> that's the next meeting. So, so the next yeah, meeting? the next meeting would be State of the City. Is all I'm saying. So, and that's usually a long. Longer. drawn out things okay. so, but uh, okay. so I might say first available meeting after the first of March if that's okay uh, yeah I'd like to get him in here as soon as okay. possible because it might be some valuable input as to uh, what we're doing with the third entrance and all that okay all right all right uh, if, if you feel real brief on the state of the city too we could do it that night okay all right I'll, I'll, I'll just see first first meeting available I'll all see right. about that all right thank you I'm Okay. Uh, I want to hear everything you have to say, though. We have a we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. No. Motion passes. Uh, I will tell you, impact fees can only be used in the area in which they're collected in. So you can't collect fees on the west side of Maumel and build a road on the east side of Maumel. So state law, when they first past impact fees it could be used anywhere within the city but they redefine the law to where that it has to be in that area so you say well we need a new fire station on the east end of town well you can only build it on the east end of town if the fees that are collected for that are coming from the east end of town that's how i understand impact fees because i looked at impact fees uh pretty hard in 2007 and 2008 and what you got to also remember is the impact fees are paid by the developer when he builds the lots and they are then passed on to the home buyers. They're not, the developer doesn't pay it. You can say all you want to that the developer's got to pay this fee. It's passed on to the ultimate home buyers of that house. So if it's a $3,000 <laughs> fee per lot, then the house is going to go up $3,000. So just what I learned in the, the little bit of research I did. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Saunders. Mayor. Uh, just as an information note for anybody that may not know this, we have an expert about Metro plans sitting here. Our mayor is. Um, there aren't going to be many around that know more about it than him. I think you were president, weren't you? I was president for one year. Yeah. But I was, I'm not the director, so. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I don't do it on a daily basis, so, yeah. So if we have questions, he's a good one to see. That, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Any other council members' comments? Mr. City Attorney? No, sir. Madam City Clerk? No. If there's no other business to come before the council, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So, second. We've got a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. Meeting is adjourned. There was an energetic response there, Jeff.